her great purpose in life was to make sure that my sister and I understood the importance of either getting a profession or getting something into your head because she believed that one if you were able to work hard nobody as mommy would say nobody could take hard work to frighten you and okay. two she believed that once you got something into your head in terms of education mm -hmm. nobody can crack your head and take and take it out. How important is it or was it for you to have opened up the office of the DPP to greater communication? I thought mm -hmm. you were going to say greater scrutiny. Well, <laughs> well, well. And, and, and the thing is, being a female first yes. as DPP, I always knew, not that I was going to be detained by it, yeah. but that is what happens where as a woman in a, in a in a world or an arena which was previously inhabited yes by only men yes of a particular era a particular era and of a particular age yes yes you are going to be held to account at a higher standard by the public at large yes. and by the media too yes I do recall several hard editorials yes. from your publication, mm. but I looked on it as part of the slings and arrows that I was going to have to be tested on. And I, and I, and I do remember several commentators as well. And it, 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 it's what is really called, should I say, an unconscious bias mm. because whereas mediocrity may be excused in men by the <laughs> my daughter would say the patriarchy say the so. patriarchy is going to ensure mm -hmm. that a woman in the same position must do much better mm -hmm. to attain the same credibility but I'm here to say that my experience has been that when you have been tested, having come through the fire, like finely tempered steel, once your credibility has been found to be, you know, of the highest quality, the respect is there, even from the patriarchy. That has been my experience. What gives you so much personal balls and legal balls? Perhaps you could just call it coolness. Well, or testicular yes. fortitude. Well, yeah, whatever. <laughs> yeah. What it's it? how I was brought up. My oh. parents, yes. Mavis Llewellyn, she was a nurse, but she was an extraordinarily positive person. She was mm -hmm. my rock. Mm -hmm. My father is a very very tough cookie mm -hmm. and he does not believe in the concept of fear he he brought up my sister and i to be unafraid two things to to be lazy and to be afraid were two bad words okay. when, you say, when you say afraid of like afraid of lizard afraid of cockroach or, well or just afraid. fear of anything okay. according to daddy you know, you must you must be able to speak truth to power. Okay. And you 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 must be bold. And, and and you were able to do that to even your parents as a child. Well, no, you know, because my father was from the old school. Okay. So he wanted you to speak it to other people, but precisely, but, but in, hold your distance, hold your father with me. That's it. But okay. even notwithstanding that, because my sister and I were independent thinkers, and because we were. Both my parents are very strong, so mm -hmm. it is in our DNA. Right. We still sought to speak our truth, right. and I was quite argumentative. Yeah. I was shy. Mm -hmm. I was well, very shy you, when no I one was. Would believe that. From, no. Well, I can tell you, from age maybe five to about age thirteen, I was very shy. I was a bookworm. Mm. My Nerd? great companion. See, I was very nerdy. Okay. I used to wear cat eye glasses. And I spoke with a list. Yeah. I still do yeah. because of the open space. Yeah. 
And I, I considered myself to be an ugly child. I had size 10 feet from early. I was an ugly child. Mm. The only beauty I had was my ability to articulate and mm -hmm. the fact that I had a great vocabulary okay. because I was such a voracious reader and also I was a speed reader. You were so conscious of how you looked that you decided that, okay, since everybody else is going to focus on that, I'm going to focus on what I put inside of my head. Well, my mother made sure that we focused on it. She would tell the story and I tell it too, that her great purpose in life was to make sure that my sister and I understood the importance of either getting a profession or getting something into your head. Because she believed that one, if you were able to work hard, nobody, as mommy would say, nobody could take hard work to frighten you. And okay. two... She believed that once you got something into your head in terms of education, mm -hmm. nobody can crack your head and take and take it out. Okay. So when other mothers were rocking the cradle and saying, uh, uh, what is it now? rock a baby. Rock -a -bye, baby yes. My mother was and saying, you have to talk. get something into your head. You must get something into your head. So that is what we grew up with. When other children were able to stand up at the gate, mm -hmm. I had to be inside making sure that I am reading my book. So I guess you also had to make up your bed and clean your room. Everything. And, and uh, as young as we were, and we were the older two girls, mm -hmm. daddy would get up on a Saturday morning from 6, 7 o'clock to start the lawnmower or to cook. He cooked. Mm -hmm. And when he was cooking, nobody else could cook there. Mm -hmm. So if we were still we in sound bed... like a prison. No, looking back now, it was what you call, my mother would call, home training. Okay. My mother believed in home training and brought up, see. Mm -hmm. That's how she, she was brought up. Mm -hmm. And I brought up my daughter to be like that. So when we would go, my sister and I would go places. Same and, way, I mean, like, get something in your head. Absolutely, go. absolutely. And that is not every bell knock that you are going to be there. Does she rebel? Well... She's like her mother. She's talkative. Okay. She has an independent mind. But I also taught her mm -hmm. the value of critical analysis. Mm -hmm. So she is discerning. Mm -hmm. And she was my daughter when she went from Immaculate at 16 on a scholarship to a private boarding school abroad. Mm -hmm. She called me about three months later. i never forget it. I said, Mommy, I want to thank you for how you brought me up. I said the same thing to my daughter. My, my mother, mother rather. Right. My mother used to say, and unfortunately, this is what is happening nowadays, that she's not going to be a delinquent parent. Mm -hmm. She used to say there are too many delinquent parents who don't know what parenting is all about. Mm -hmm. And when you're a delinquent parent, that is how you bring up a, a dysfunctional child. And you would, you would have had front row view to that in the court system. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And in fact, just generally. Yes. You can, you know, a lot of children go astray because a lot of parents, either they don't know how to be a parent mm. or they are delinquent. Mm. In other words, they want to be their child's friend. My daughter, I remember, yep. <laughs> used to say to me when she was like about six, seven, Mommy, you're not being my friend. I said, I'm not your friend. Yes. I'm your mother. Yes. So you have to set boundaries. Yes. You have to... To, to, to impart that vision to yeah. your child. For example, my daughter, looking back on it now, her, parent, her, her friends used to think it was weird, but I did not allow her to have any of these Game Boy things yes. or At PSPs time, yes. until she was about nine when the value and the respect for reading was concretized yes. in her psyche. I wanted to be a librarian because I thought that this is the only way that I would have been able to get enough books okay. to feed my voracious appetite because yes. I read so quickly yes. that, for example, if I'm going into the bathroom, I'd walk with two or three Hardy Boys or Nancy Drew, yes. and I, before I leave the bathroom, I would have read them all. That's how quickly I read. I mm. used to read encyclopedias in the days of encyclopedias. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I would read them yes. for fun. Yes. But 
I think it was when I was maybe about 14, 15. I thought to myself, what my mother used to say was most important is not what was on the outside. This is when I was emerging from that shy period. Mm -hmm. And I discovered that I was a frustrated actress. And I, we would, we would walk out to Crossroads to take the bus, my friends and I. They are there titivating in the mirror. I would turn my back to the mirror looking at them. Because it just didn't matter to me. It's, right, it's really what is on the inside. Right, the crossroad, crossroad was the, the boy meeting space. Right, but I didn't really participate in it. I would live vicariously through my friends. Okay. Because given how strict my mother was, yes. I had to get on the bus yes. and go home. And get home by a certain right, time. Right, because yeah. up to when I was maybe in third form, my mother used to come for me at school. Okay. And I had to prevail upon her because my sister by then started coming to the school okay. that the both of us go, can go, take the bus together. and go home because she was very protective right, right. but um, after a while I realized and because of doing the reading mm -hmm. you know and, and introspecting as young as I was and being exposed to literature literature is my first love oh, language, you. history that it really is about what is inside mm -hmm. and I think I, I realized that I had a gift of the gab mm. that I had a sense of humor mm. and that it doesn't matter that I speak with a lisp it's what I'm going to say um, it doesn't matter that you are not beautiful in the classical sense mm. because it's a sort of values and, and my mother used to teach me this but it really started coming to light when I was going on to sixth form and then I went to got into law and, and the rest is history. Mm -hmm. Do you still have those shortcomings about beauty? No, no because I give, I, I, I like to mentor mm -hmm. people, younger persons than myself, and I give a lot of motivational speeches. Mm -hmm. I have had to face a lot of challenges mm -hmm. on my journey to success. I have also recognized as an adult and as a professional at a fairly senior level now that the greatest cancer of the mind that one can have is insecurity mm -hmm. and you will be surprised that sometimes when people are coming at you in a negative way it's because of their insecurity mm -hmm. so I have reached a stage now where I'm comfortable I mean long ago I'm comfortable in my own skin mm -hmm. and I see the contribution that I'm making at this level of the justice system mm -hmm to make the office of the DPP a better place, to mentor the persons here to be the best professional that they can be, mm -hmm. and to maintain an atmosphere mm -hmm. that my colleagues can feel so motivated to actually outshine the DPP. There was a time, many years ago, there was an exodus of persons from the office of the there DPP. There is always an exodus yeah. in any prosecutor's office. The office of the DPP is usually the primary source, has been for years, mm. for persons going on the bench. Mm -hmm. In the last four to five years, I have lost no less than about 25 persons yeah, yeah, who have yeah, gone on the bench. Yeah. So it has always been that reservoir where okay. persons have gone on the bench or people have gone into greener pastures they have gone out to um to private practice several of our great advocates frank phipps used to be a deputy director here mm -hmm. lloyd barnett used to be here mm -hmm. so many persons mm -hmm. in private practice too both here and abroad started their career mm -hmm. in, the, in a prosecutor's office the allegation then and i'm going now maybe like 20 25 years ago yes. was that you 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 knew your competition or or you moved quickly to chop down any Paul and Lillian? Yes, you would, you, would, you would chop down anything that is likely to be to give you competition. Oh my gosh. Yes. Then anybody doing that doesn't know Paul and Lillian. Okay. My greatest calling card as a prosecutor was my ability to work hard. And to take on cases that other people didn't want to do. Okay. Yes. Yes. Which is well, you why. you were given some of those too. Oh, I was given many of those. Yes. I fully remember 
that when the newly minted Leslie Wolf yes. came from the Court of Appeal and was appointed to be the new Chief Justice, I was the only female deputy at that time. Right. I was surrounded by men, yes. male deputies, and the DPP. And when Mr. Wolf was going to sit for the first time in the trial court, right over by home circuit, mm -hmm. it was yours truly, the most junior deputy and the only female who was uh, assigned to go over there before him for three to four weeks. Do you, do you, yes. Do you recall him looking over his glass? And Always. I've appeared before him many, several times. Yeah. Was it because you weren't intimidated by whomever it was that would have been well, on the Well, the thing is or that I had developed a reputation among the police, among the defense attorneys, generally, mm. for not being intimidated by any scenario. As I said, there's no substitute for hard work. Okay. So everybody knew that I'm not intimidated by any situation. Okay. I take the blows, mm -hmm. and depending on who it is, I give as good as I get. Let's right. ask KD Knight. Okay. I have never aspired to be a judge because mm -hmm. I am the woman in the arena. You have to know yourself. You know your temperament. Yes. I am the woman in the arena. So I like to be in the cut and thrust, in the trenches. Would you have made a bad judge? I you? probably would make a bad judge. Mm. Because when you are a judge, mm. I mean, I'm not saying, you know, if I really put my mind no, to it, I'm, I could do it. Yes. But in terms of your temperament, you can't insert yourself into the proceedings. Mm -hmm. You know, and um, I think in terms of my And maybe value, you would have. Maybe perhaps. You yes. But you see, remember I told you, yes. I'm comfortable in my own skin. Yes. 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 So, I have never been one to follow, you know, what the accepted crowd would love. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Most prosecutors who come to the office of the DPP mm -hmm. aspire to be a judge. Okay. Most. Okay. I can okay. tell you that. Okay. Most okay. who come to the office so aspire to be a judge. So, this is the learning ground. Oh, yes, it is. Because yeah. with the greatest of respect to the people at the defense, yes. remember, we are in the Court of Appeal every day. We are here. You are... The volume of work, yes. you go on a circuit, you're going with 200 cases. Mm -hmm. A defense cause may come in with four yes. or five in three weeks. Right. Yeah. So the law, you are surrounded by the law, you have to research the law. And the volume of work, mm -hmm. you know, you're, you're, you're accustomed to the burden right. in a way that they may not be. Mm -hmm. So it takes a prosecutor, a prosecutor has a much easier time of it, mm -hmm. learning the work of a judge than defense counsel. Mm -hmm. What's the worst barb that was thrown at you? Oh, um, I have had I have had bad words thrown at me. Yeah. I remember I had one very senior counsel after the after the court um, adjourned, and the, he got an acquittal for his client, very notorious person, but it was a very hard fought contest, mm -hmm. and he turned at the door and gave me the finger. And I just looked at him. I said, no, look at that. He won? But he's, he, what? Did he because he, he was a chauvinist. Okay. And how was dare I, I? How dare I? No, no, no. Okay. Katie would not have done that. Okay. Katie okay. would not have done that. Okay. How dare I, okay. as a woman, give him such a hard time? Okay. But the public... Was it the woman in you he was attacking or the lawyer in you? It was the insecurity in himself that he was portraying. The insecurity in himself that he was portraying. That is what he was doing. Yeah. Right? Yeah. As far as I'm concerned, ad ad advocacy, you have the cut and thrust. Yes. But let us meet each other on a level playing field. Right. Right. You know? Yes. Um, we are there, we are going to use all the tools in our toolkit right. to seek to put forward the best position for our respective mm -hmm. um, side that we are on. Mm -hmm. But a prosecutor has a larger duty, mm -hmm. not only to the victims, not only to the community, but also to the accused. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I am the person, I will go for the jugular, I'm going to go hard, I'm a hard prosecutor. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, I'm the first person, after I've got my conviction, to say, 
this is a judge, you know, who's amenable to hearing character evidence. Mm -hmm. Maybe you couldn't get a, does, does, it, does your client have um, a church member or a priest? Yes. You know, but I will confess to you, I love the cut and thrust of advocacy. Okay. And as I said, having appeared against so many defense counsel, I can remember some wonderful cases against Frank Phipps, Churchill Nita, Lord mm -hmm. Anthony Gifford, yes. Earl Witter, even Bert Samuels. <laughs> Barry Nita Robertson and I have had some some Amazing. great contests. Yes. yes, I love those. You know, great contests. You know, Why but you um, I have been fortunate. <laughs> Let us put it this way, Bert and I, we have had a couple of contests there that, you know, some really hot words have been, even when I'm not in the case, <laughs> hot words have been spoken. Jackie Samuels Brown and I yes. Yes. have had some, some great contests as well. And I've learned from everyone. Do you prefer going against certain judges as against listen, others? Listen. So what is the tiff between you and Judith? There is no one? tiff. There is no tiff, you know. You're not carrying feeling for Judith. Not Cruz at all. The I did my job. Okay. I did my job. Listen, when you have been doing, you remember I told you, you know, I'm comfortable in my own skin. Mm -hmm. And this whole insecurity thing, I'm not in it. Mm -hmm. I, I don't go there. I don't operate at that level. Mm -hmm. I can prosecute hard. Mm -hmm. And in the twinkling of an eye, the next day, Mm. You and I are chatting and having a laugh. Mm -hmm. But I cannot dictate to people how you are going to see me. Mm -hmm. And what you have to have, which I believe I have, thanks to my parents, mm -hmm. is mental toughness. Mm -hmm. Everybody cannot like you. And especially when you, I'm told that I have a flamboyant personality so i'm told i have a an assertive voice and the irony of it in my personal life i am no, i'm not soft but i love romantic music and i i really climb several steps down from being the general in control mm -hmm. that i have to be in my public yeah. persona yeah. But I have no tiff. Listen, I wonder if you know the amount of cases over the years that I've had to deal with. The amount of attorneys, the amount of judges. What would happen to Paul of Anissa well in Queen's Council if you are going to take on the thin skinned and take on people's angst? It would show on my features. I can't afford that to happen. Mm -hmm. And I'm just not that sort of person. Mm. And I've tried to bring my daughter up like that. My mother used to laugh after me. And my sister still does. My very, very good friends will say, if only people knew, Paula doesn't know how to manage anybody. Yeah. Mm. I will be upset with you for something. And I forget that I'm supposed to be upset with you. Mm. You know, I don't take on that sort of thing. I'm a thin skin. I speak my mind. I'm my father's daughter like that. My father will chew you out. Mm -hmm. And tomorrow everything is okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, I did what I had to do. Because it is my job. And if I believe at the time I did. That in law. She was wrong. And I took the matter. Took the judicial review court mm. and they agreed with me mm. and found in my favor mm. by two to one and as far as I'm concerned we move on mm. it's as simple as that I think I have a very high sense of emotional intelligence mm. and that has stood me in good stead so you have to be able to read the room read the persons and although I have a reputation and I made no apology for it that I will speak truth to power. It doesn't matter who power is. Mm -hmm. But I still think that I can be charming. Mm -hmm. I love to laugh. I love to smile. I love words. The greatest thing for me is to be in the presence of someone who, like myself, likes to banter. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. and use metaphors yes. and an appreciation of literature. But I am able, because of my father, to sup with kings and walk with the common man. When a lot of people come up to me, whether at the supermarket, at the bank, anywhere I go to, and they say, Miss Llewellyn, Miss Llewellyn, or I've met you before, or I'm going to give you a joke. I am standing in the patty line at Tasty when it was at Concert Spring Road. Mm -hmm. And I had on a spaghetti strap, blouse, and a tight jeans. It was on a Saturday morning. And a gentleman, a lady said to me, said, You know, you look like Paul and Llewellyn. Thank you. And I just, you know, shocked. Yeah. The man behind her said, you know, I was thinking the same thing. Oh, you favor Paula Llewellyn? But I said, but Paula Llewellyn wouldn't be near her. Buy her own patty. She would have bodyguard to buy her patty. Yes. So when I, he said that, I started to laugh and they saw the open space. Yes. And all three of us started yes. to laugh. Yes. And I said, sir, I am that beast. And mm -hmm. we laughed again. Yes. And that is how I would be. I am not. So it's. I'm not caught up into this hype thing. But it's also an example that people believe things about you that are not that are not necessarily true. But listen because to they me. didn't expect you to be buying your own patty. Well, they, they didn't no. expect you to be picking up your child from school and just sit on a school later, wait for your evening time. Like right, right. Other persons get right. detained in traffic. And I go to parent. Have, well, I'm going to tell you something. Work. I'm going to tell you when yeah. I went to the first parent teachers meeting when you have the consultation, yeah. and I was meeting one of her teachers for the first time. You know, you're going around. Yes. It's not yeah. immaculate. So she's there in her uniform and I'm sitting down there and I sat down. I think this is the art and craft teacher or something like that. She was in first form. Yeah. And the lady said, um, she called my daughter's name. My yeah. daughter has a different surname to yeah. me. Yeah. And she said, um, I, and, and what exactly is your relationship to her? Are you her? Um, so she didn't guardian or her aunt and I paused and I said I'm her mother yes. the lady nearly dropped off her yes, chair yes. <laughs> I'm her mother so right? what, 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 naturally speaking what I'm was her the, mother what was the surprise because I'm never my profile and it is for security as well yeah, yeah. does not see me speaking a whole lot about her but every single thing that a mother and a very busy mother has had to go through, yeah. I have had to go through right. it. And I just know? want to make it clear that it's not that she didn't have a father who didn't Oh yes, oh yes, her father, her she, she but, had a very interactive father, okay. very, very interactive okay. father. But at that early has, stage? Who has, well, always, because he, all her milestones, he's there as well. Okay. okay. But you know, the, the fathers always believe that the mothers own the children. Okay, yes. But, oh yes, her, she's very close best to her father. As a, she's very close to her father. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And, and, and we have co-parented yes. beautifully. Yes. I will always be glad that motherhood found me. I, I am a workaholic. Mm -hmm. I say it. I am a workaholic. But what I realized is that motherhood tempered a little bit of that. And I found it a very humbling experience. I had to deal with the challenges and the obstacles. Mm -hmm. But you know what those challenges and obstacles did? It made me a better candidate to be DPP. Mm -hmm. Because it made me realize how important insecurity, not having it, mm -hmm. is in a leader. It made me recognize that as a leader, you must build the best possible atmosphere for your staff mm -hmm. to explore their full potential. It made me recognize that if you are going to be insecure, it means that you will be the reservoir of toxicity, mm -hmm. which is the worst thing for an agency. Mm -hmm. And it made me recognize that what I'm here for is to make a contribution, it's not to aggrandize myself. Which, so I regard mothering as being, being my greatest achievement in terms of having my daughter is 23 now 
and having really contributed to what I consider to be a wholesome individual mm. who is admired and commended okay. by others for being just a, 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 a nice, pleasant person. Yes. Okay. And my career, I've, I count myself to be very fortunate to have lived my dream to be two things, a public servant mm -hmm. committed to giving service above self mm -hmm. and also being a prosecuting attorney. Mm -hmm. I was fortunate. I have received over time invitations from members of the private bar and prominent members too mm -hmm. to go into private practice from very early in my career. Mm -hmm. But I turned it down because I wanted to be a prosecuting attorney mm -hmm. and I wanted to be a public servant. Mm -hmm. When you go up against a strong adversary, mm -hmm. then it stretches you in terms of your capabilities and you must learn a lot in terms of the adjustments you have to make to your preparation and strategy for successful prosecution I would say 40%, 60% is good preparation and 40% is an appreciation of strategy. Mm -hmm. I have enjoyed, I have enjoyed most of all going up against persons that I would consider to be strong adversaries. Mm -hmm. They have brought out the best in me mm -hmm. and I count having gone up against these strong adversaries as being part and parcel of the making of Paul Llewellyn, the advocate. As you prepare to leave this office, don't know if you will have an extension, um, don't know if you want to. What is your word to the people you now lead, um, to the people of Jamaica, and to young women who wants to be another well it, it's not a, you're the first and there won't be another first in here but young women but you have other women yes being dpps yes but but um you know who aspire to be a trailblazer like you are well first of all you have to be comfortable in your own skin you have to appreciate that your your best organ is your mind you have to put yourself in a position, especially if you're a young woman, surround yourself with a lot of positivity, positive mentors, role models. You have to cultivate courage, wisdom, strength. You have to cultivate emotional intelligence. But above all, strive to be excellent. Strive to be the best of yourself. Never give up. Never tell yourself, I can't. And when you face the inevitable challenges, because that's a part of life, mm -hmm. the potholes, the obstacles, learn from them. Mm -hmm. And remember that what is most important is the inner person. Yes, you can seek to enhance mm -hmm. what is outside, but you have to keep it in perspective. But never stop learning from life seek to help others mm. because when you try to help others whether in a small way or in a big way it's a great positive on your soul and that is what you exude mm. i think being positive is perhaps even better than makeup eventually you know so i am thankful that I was able to live my dream and my passion and to make a contribution at the highest level.